What's up, what's up, guys? Mark Mendez here, the real estate coach. Uh, back for another episode of Everyday People. Man, I'm excited. I'm excited for all of them. I know it sounds corny, but I get excited for all of them. But uh, this is one of my mentors in the real estate game, Stephanie Stone. And I'm excited to have her talk to y'all, tell her, tell you a little bit about her story and kind of where she started to come from and how she's starting to build this huge real estate empire, in my opinion. So let's give Stephanie a call. Hello. Hey, boss lady. How you doing? I'm great. How are you? I'm doing good. Thank you for joining us today on the episode of Everyday People. I'm super excited to have you uh, just because I kind of little intro. I was like, man, she was one of my mentors or she is my mentor in real estate. Um, and just talk about a little bit about your story. So tell me, tell me a little bit about Stephanie Stone uh, before you were in real estate. Absolutely. And, and thank you so much for, for having me on. And I really appreciate you shouting me out as one of your mentors. You know, I always say that coaches need coaches. Mm -hmm. um, there's always going to be somebody uh, better out there who knows something different. So, uh, you know, I love the fact that we get to work together, uh, yeah. you know, and, and you help my business as much as I help yours. So I just wanted to mention that at the top. But yeah, I, I guess a little that. bit about me. Um, I grew up in San Antonio, Texas. Uh, San Antonio is my home. It's my love. It's my heart. Um, and, uh, you know, getting into real estate, that's a lot of, of really where, where my passion comes from. Before getting into real estate, um, I, I swear this job will sound made up. Um, I worked for a company that worked with bars and restaurants doing trivia nights. Um, I promise it was an actual job. I got what? paid. I had benefits. Like, yeah, like a big kick job. This is an actual job for somebody. Um, and, and what I did is I ran the operations department. So, um, managing staffing managers, managing almost 1600 gig economy type employees. Um, but before that, I was mostly self-employed uh, for, for most of my life. So I, you know, I come from a entrepreneurial spirit sort of okay. family. You know, my dad owned his own business. He uh, was a landscaper. And so I remember being really little and going with him early in the morning while he went out. From? You said you're born and raised here, uh, right? Yeah, so um, kind of just uh, 410 in Bandera. Okay. Um, so not quite the west side. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> not quite the west side. West side adjacent. Uh, more like okay. the bougie part of the west side. So, okay. uh, yeah, with the Colby Glass Elementary, Pat Neff Middle School. Okay. Um, so that's, that, that's, that's where we're from. But, yeah, you know, my, my dad owned his business. Uh, so you told yeah, me your, so your dad owned his own business. Yeah, dad, is, dad owned his own business, um, and, you know, I was exposed at a very early age with, you know, what hard work looks like and what gotcha. it takes in charting your own course, um, and I've always been that kind of person who likes to figure stuff out on my own. I'm that trial and error sort of person, um, so I've worked in dang near every industry. I used to work in uh, film casting, work casting extras when I lived in Austin. I owned a bakery. Um, when I lived in Austin, um, went to culinary school, did, you know, uh, pastry catering, you know, wow. weddings, birthdays, that sort of thing. Um, and then came back to San Antonio in 2008, continued to work for myself um, until I got the job with the trivia company. And that's really been the only time that I've worked for, you know, for someone else for a while. Um, and then I just decided to get into real estate almost on a dare. If you really want to look at it that way. Really? Who yeah. dared you? Um, yeah, well, I dared myself. Okay. Um, I was about to turn 40, and I go, you know what? I've always wanted to get my real estate license, so let's just see if I can do it before my 40th birthday. It was like a little bucket list, like check it off a list sort of thing. I had no intention of going real estate full time. Wow. I've never seen myself as a salesperson. Um, terribly shy and, and introverted. Um, when you're close to me, you know, when, when we're tight, I'm the the most gregarious person, like biggest personality that you're ever going to meet. But when I'm around new people, I am terribly shy. I'm terribly awkward. So it's like, oh, yeah, being a sales person in any industry is not for me. Um, but I ended up taking my classes and passing my test in, I think it was a total of 10 weeks from start to finish. Uh, so I, I pushed it. 
All right, so um, pause. Working... Right, pause. We got some life lessons in here that I want to talk about. So okay, this is not even in your comfort, le- not even in your wheelhouse. Like you don't like talking to new people, and we talk about when uh-huh. we train our agents all the time. This is a relationship business, you know. I think yes. uh, as realtors, we get you know the. I don't like to be called a salesperson either as real estate. Like I'm trying to help families and I know you are and what we Mm -hmm. try to do. We're trying to help families like truly create some generational wealth. But how in the heck you, I don't think you knew all that then. So you still jumped in just on a dare to yourself and was like, I just want my real estate license. Even if I don't do it. Yeah. Wow. I I want, I wanted to sneak into like rich people's houses and see what it looks (laughs) like that. I wanted like, I, I, I can hold my own personal 10 minute open house anytime I want. Yes, please sign me up. That's actually um, yeah, pretty I, cool. I never thought I, of it like that. Yeah. I, but yeah, I had no intention of like making this a career. Maybe it was like a little back pocket sort of thing to keep, or, you know, maybe wow. one day I could say that at some point I sold a house, you know, again, this was not, um, like you said, it wasn't my comfort zone. It wasn't my, my wheelhouse, but, you know, like I tell our agents, I tell you, um, you know, try something. If it doesn't work and you don't like it, cool. You never have to do it again. But if you end up liking it, cool, you stumbled on gold. So right. I've always been that, maybe I try it. I don't like it. I still have a good job that I'm not looking to give up anytime soon. Let's just see what happens. Okay, so we're going to take a quick break here to shout out to one of our sponsors of Everyday People. We just uh, having a good time at the PSG back to school giveaway. Thank you for everybody that was able to come out. Uh, we got the fire truck, a few bouncy houses, some food. A lot of good community guys that play sports do a lot of different things for us. So uh, it's a good turnout. We got people cutting hair as well, and uh, it's a blessing to be out here and have all these awesome people around as well. So uh, we got the game coming on in a little bit. That's gonna be exciting. A lot of good athletes. So uh, I'm excited, man. It's good. Energy. The mark of Keen. Here's Keen. The mark is Keen. Five or Keen, I'm not. and welcome back to everyday people we're talking about we're talking to stephanie stone who has just talked about why she got into real estate which i didn't even know this story it was literally just on a dare to herself she didn't really even have interest she didn't really want to sell houses she'd rather just look at houses on her own Stephanie, tell them how many deals you've closed and kind of how that's transitioned now that you actually jumped into real estate. And I know how crazy good you've been and such a great of a teacher, but kind of brag about yourself a little bit and tell them about the story that 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 jump and that leap of faith, you know, what has got you now. Yeah, absolutely. So um, I my very first deal was a friend of mine who uh, had been buying this house that had been on the market almost a year. And she saw, she reached out to me, hey, I saw that you got your license. Um, There's this house that I want to go see in Wincrest. And she goes, can you show it to me? And I was like, cool, this is why I got my license. I get to go look at at houses. And you know me, I'm a fan of like the historical homes, the old homes, that mid-century stuff. So that's all Wincrest is. And I was like, oh, I get to look at this really cool house built in 1957. Yes, let's go do it. So, um, we went and looked at this house. We fell in love. And she's like, I need to figure out how to get in this house. Um, I have a house uh, that I would need to sell. Oh Let's my. figure this out. So it was a little trial by fire. But knowing that, one, it was a friend of mine. And mm-hmm. I think I was very lucky that my first deal was Fear of Influence. And I'll talk a little bit about how that was like my only fear deal that I think I've ever done. <laughs> um, but my first deal was Fear of Influence. And we t- we figured it out together. Um, we ended up 
getting her house on the market and gotten off got offers very quickly. We worked out the deal mm. for this house that had been on the market for quite a while. We got it closed, and I was like, "Cool." Again, this is, at some point I can say, "You know what? I sold a house." I sold a house. Went back to my job, you know, continuing on, and I was like, "Well, let's just see if I can do this again." Um, so I started putting myself out there in. You know, again, we talked about the fact that I'm not great at like talking to strangers. I've I've never been great on the phone right. um, until I started really getting into real estate and getting that practice in. Um, I'm again when I do open houses, I'm terribly shy and you know, again that awkward kid. I've always been that person. But I was like, you know, where my where my strength is? Social media, text messages. Okay. So let me just kind of reach out on social media in different ways. So I started making connections with complete strangers. And, you know, we talked about the fact that I've never seen myself as a salesperson, but I come from a service background, service mm. and operations. So go. how can I help people and keep things organized? Cool. That's real estate. I'm a, I'm a project manager. So reaching out to folks and finding folks. I was that first time home buyer person. Okay. Um, I, I joked that my first year I was the queen of the hundred and sixty one thousand dollar house. That was my average house price my first year, which wasn't that long ago, twenty nineteen. Right. Um, but I ended up closing a total of nineteen transactions, nineteen contracts in my first year. Of those nineteen, my first two was that buy and that sell from that friend of mine, but the rest of them were those connections that I made online. So getting a little outside of my comfort zone, doing something new but keeping that one foot in the thing that I have some confidence in. So, um, Which was I found like organization and service. Organization, service, and having conversations over text and on social media and messenger and collecting folks okay. that way. So, so you so, stayed in uh, your comfort zone, but you, you got out of it. So you, you had enough comfort to let you try enough to dabble in the things like the cold, like speaking to new strangers. Exactly. Like, so the comfort of my skill set. Right. of what I knew how to do, but going outside of what I was using it for, the type That's of conversations good. that I was having. That's real good. So now you, that leads to, I, I know I was part of your uh, mentorship program uh, mm -hmm. when I first, you were my mentor, and I always tell the story, like, I was like, who is this chick, and why is she talking <laughs> to me like this? Like, Oh, you hated me at first. <laughs> I, I, you know, I did, and, and, and we've talked about this. I mean, we've gone through this story many times, but everyone, like, why? Like, why stick with it? And I'm just like, like you said early in the first show, leaders need to be led. And I recognize mm -hmm. your leadership skills. Um, I, I recognize your no-nonsense. And I, the biggest thing I think I, I take credit for personally is, at least for my own decision to stay, I just recognize the innovation and they're always forward thinking and they're always keeping ahead of, the, uh, of, you know, the competitors or anybody else and doing yeah. it in a way that is still, like you said, service and helping people. And so because of that, that's why I've stuck around and that's why you've been one of my strongest mentors. And I just, I just appreciate it. So talk about a little bit now, kind of after your first year, what, what's kind of your real estate career look like since then? Yeah. So, uh, Year number two, um, I almost, gosh, I think I actually exactly doubled uh, the number of contracts that I did. My dollar per house went up. I think I went from 161000 to close to two hundred and twenty um, as my average year two. Um, also, those the folks that don't know me know that I love numbers and statistics, so I'm going to throw out numbers all day long. Mm -hmm. um, but, you know, folks ask me all the time, well, how would you go from 19 year one to 38 year two? And I tell them it's maintaining those relationships. I didn't collect twice as many people or twice as many contacts or even really have twice as many conversations mm. uh, my second year. It was the folks that maybe I started talking to in my first year who were finally in a position where they could make some sort of move or, or do something. Or they were referrals from the folks that I closed out my first year mm -hmm. in real estate maintaining even the relationships with my, my close, you know, my close transaction folks. Right. So it was really about just letting 
you know, letting that mature. Um, you know, I, I tell you and I tell folks, you know, you plant the seeds today mm-hmm. that are going to come to harvest down the road. I can't be mad that if I plant a tomato seed today that I don't have a tomato tomorrow. And some, some, some plants take longer to bloom. And so I just think of my folks that were my year two folks. Is this the ones that just needed a little extra sunshine and water? And so yeah, I would continue absolutely. to give them that sunshine and that water. And that's really where that service comes from that, hey, right now isn't right for you, but we're going to we're gonna work together. We are a team. And if it takes you one month, three months, six months, 18 months, heck, I need a paycheck in 18 right. months. I'm going to be with you until – until the day we get you, you keys and even beyond that. So it's right. really about maintaining that relationship. So 38 year, uh, year two, um, and then 41 year three. And I'm now at a point where I get to do my favorite thing in real estate, which is agent coaching and agent development. That's yeah. absolutely my favorite thing. Um, and, and I run the stone team, which you are a part of Mark and watching our agents grow and succeed and, celebrating when we've got something to celebrate is my my favorite thing to do in this industry i agree i, I mean i agree uh, and i appreciate you allowing me to be part of this journey uh sticking with my knuckleheadedness you know i know it can be a little <laughs> a little difficult but uh yeah. no nah, you, you we you all have our moments <laughs> yeah i just seem to have a little more than others but um, I appreciate that sticking with me and just i'm just excited to see where the team's going and, and like you said coming from myself from a coaching mentoring side it you know it, it i love doing this also i'm trying to catch up i'm a year mm-hmm. behind on you but I, i'm hoping a year to be where you're at and just only coaching and teaching and doing these fun podcasts uh for the people so let me ask you this yeah one last question sure. what, what would you want people to know about stephanie stone and what would you like to tell people that are just fearful of trying something new, trying something different, not following the dream? Yeah, I think what I would like people to know about me, um, you know, really not only just in this industry, but kind of my philosophy of, of life is, you know, you know, we, we've all had our tough times. You know, we've been through some stuff. I have been through some stuff. So it takes a lot to kind of knock me off my game. Um, because I'm like, oh, somebody yelled at me on the phone because they're an expired listing and didn't want to talk to me. Cool. Um, on the scale of things that have happened in my life that is so down low in terms of good things and bad things, that, Absolutely. that's way on the side of a good thing compared to a lot of stuff that we go through. And we think of our toughest times and our struggles in, in business, whatever industry you're in, um, you know, we can survive so much and we can thrive in such difficult environments that why would some homeowner who goes, I don't really want to talk to you right now. Why would that completely take us off of our game? So you know, I'm that person who, yeah. No, keep going. No, you're good. Sorry. My okay. bad. I'm just agreeing. Well, no, I'm no, like, no worries. No I'm worries. just nodding over here. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Um, you know, so, so recognizing um, just kind of where things fit into that scale. And again, I'm that one who really, is that person who always takes a step back and tries to look at things big picture of is my frustration right now, like frustration that's going to be there for the rest of my life, or is this just a blip in the radar and in the, you know, is it a grain of sand in my story? Um, And I think Mm. that's really helped me a lot to continue to persevere. And I think that's what I would love to impart on, you know, the agents on our team, the agents that we coach, the agents listening to this podcast who are looking for that nugget of wisdom is take a, when, when you're in, when you're in that spiral, when you're in the, you know what, and you're like, why am I doing this? This is never going to work. Um, everybody hates me. Everybody knows that I'm new and they're going to see right through me. And we're in this panic mode, this desperation mode, take a moment, take a breath and like, Try to look a little outside of yourself and you're going to realize that you're further along than you thought you were and that it's not as bad as it seems right in this moment. You get up, you dust yourself off and you continue to move forward. And that's the folks who succeed, the folks who are good. It's not luck. You make your own luck. And so if you can get up and continue to put one foot in front of the other, that's how Folks like me, that's how other top producers, that's how folks like Mark, who are killing it, who are top of the game, 
that's how we do it. It's continuing to, again, get up and move forward in spite of those little things that want to temporarily knock us back because I'm here to tell you that they are just temporary. Man, I... That's going to turn into a whole viral video, that that right there. <laughs> Good God. Hashtag I, I, trademark, TM, TM, TM. <laughs> <laughs> I literally couldn't have said it better than myself, boss. Like, I feel like the people that, that quote, unquote, make it in whatever they do, they just don't ever quit. They don't ever stop. They just mm-hmm. keep going. And if it's banging their head against the wall, they're going to keep banging to that wall is dented. You know, and that that's going to yeah. make their dent. So. I appreciate you so, so much and how you told us a little, just a little bit. Um, and I just appreciate you coming on. It's been a long time coming to have my boss lady on. I always call her boss lady. And then when people are like, she's your boss, I'm like, she's not my boss. <laughs> but like, yeah. my I, boss I am, lady. I am, I am a boss. I'm not your boss. I'm, I'm the boss. There you go. <laughs> See? And the mic is dropped. Well, I appreciate Miss <laughs> Stephanie Stone, two-time icon agent with EXP Realty. My mentor, my friend, and the leader of the Stone Team. And I appreciate you joining Everyday People. Thank you for inviting me. Yes, ma'am. We'll talk to you later. I'll see you tomorrow training. See you tomorrow. All right. Bye-bye. Man. So thank you for joining us. Another episode of Everyday People. My boss lady, one of my mentors, Stephanie Stone. I mean, she's just dropping some nuggets there, guys. I got to really check that out. Share it, like it, subscribe it on YouTube. Everyday People, guys, a real estate coach. Thank you for joining in. See y'all next time. Remember, your gift plus your why equals your purpose.